Um, it looks like the agenda is super full, but it's not. I just wanted to make sure that I itemized a few things um, so that we went over it. Um, so there are no minutes that I have from the fall 2020 meeting. I'm pretty sure it's in existence, but it's been so long ago that I don't remember. I'd have to ask Beth, who was the outgoing chair then, if she remembers who took minutes. Um, obviously, there's none for the 2020 um, spring fling, so we didn't have anything there. Um, and is there anybody available that would be willing to take the minutes today um, for this meeting? So I'll jump out if it wants. You're recording it, right? We're recording it. So I mean, in but theory, we in writing say, in a minute. Yeah, that works. Okay. So I'm just one. going to say be recording. I like the way you think, Sarah. All righty, let's move on. Minutes. Okay, Spring Fling 2020. Um the conference schedule um, for Spring Fling 2020, Denise and I had had completely done. Um, it was just waiting on a few revisions and the approval from the board. Um, but before we got canceled, um, we had a full slate. Um, we were pretty excited about everything we had going on. Um, so what we did was um, we were able to connect a lot of the programs um, and the contacts from Spring Fling to Todd and his group who were busy preparing um, and sent it to Heather and everything. And they were able to use some of those contacts for fall programming. So um, I think some of the work, the legwork that Denise and I did didn't go in vain. Um, it was definitely able to be used um, for what you guys are going to see in programming this month. Um, for 2020, uh, the spring fling, obviously, I don't know if it's going to be in person or virtual. I think that'll just be determined. Um, we'll probably find more about that a little bit later. But I did want to let um, whoever helps the incoming chair um, and whoever will be taking Denise's place, um, so the cohort and um, partner in crime, as I called her, um, I do have smart 529 mm -hmm. bags still and the legal pads. Um, the SMART 529 was donated by the 529 um, State Auditor's Office and, or Treasurer's. I think, I can't remember which one is in charge of that one. And the other one was um, my local Rotary donated the legal pad. So I'm just talking about the swag that you would have got upon registration, the bag and the uh, and a pad that would go in it. So I still have that. So um, Mary and her team who are going to be in charge of Spring Fling 2021, if we have it in person, I have everything in my office. It's actually over there with Clifford. Um, and I'd be happy to bring it down so that you guys have it, um, you know, to be able to do your bags for the in-person event. Um, is there any questions about any of the spring fling information that I've just been talking about? Okay, I'm gonna move to fall conference. And as you guys know, I speak fast. I can't get it out of my system. Um, if you need me to slow down to reiterate something, or if you have questions, I'm very informal. Just bounce up and let me know that you would like to say something. Um, the next is Fall Conference 2020, which is obviously currently what we're sitting in right now. Um, we were able to, as the Public Library Division, and kind of I just did it, but um, gave credit to the Library Division, we were able to facilitate a program submission on behalf of the Public Library Division for um, fall conference. Um, the first person language that was presented by Jody out of the um, Division of Addiction Science and Family Medicine <laughs> was held on Wednesday. So this past Wednesday from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, if anybody ever needs her contact information, let me know. I can send it to you. Um, she did a presentation for my local United Way and that's how I got connected with her. Um, I thought her programming was something that all public libraries need to consider, especially because we're dealing with the you know, opioid um, epidemic in some areas more than others. And we kind of have to watch what we say, um, you know, just to make sure that people feel welcome and that we're not kind of degrading them or trying to talk down to them. So if you would like her contact information, let me know, I'll get it to you, but please be aware, she is currently about to go on maternity leave any day now. Um, so I would say if you would like to know more information about it, 
contact that um, per actual division itself so that you can get a little bit more. Um, current means, I wanted to go over a few things. Um, you'll see West Virginia Public Library's COVID-19 virtual meetings. If you're not aware of, um, there is a weekly meeting that takes place every Friday. Um, mostly it's directors, but it's not just directors, it's staff who have a few minutes to be able to log on. Um, it's normally from one to two, we keep it about under an hour, and it's a great way to just kind of um, bounce some ideas off of what you might be dealing with because of COVID. Maybe it has nothing to do with COVID and you're just running into a brick wall and you need some advice. Um, this meeting is perfect for that. So if um, you are some staff members of libraries um, who might would like, you know, like to know more about this, um, contact Megan. Um, I can, even if you email me, I can forward your email to her so that you can ask her for the link every week. Um, she does record it, so if you can't make it, and maybe Friday is a bad day, you're off Fridays, there is a recording every week with a recap. So um, you can always kind of keep up with what's going on in the state of West Virginia. Um, I've also found it very pleasant. Um, some of you guys are in different consortiums than I. Some of you are like a trillion miles away from my library, so I never got to interact with you guys outside of conferences. Um, so I feel that I know a lot of the staff members in West Virginia libraries a lot more um, closely now, and I feel a lot more comfortable with reaching out um, and not just kind of doing a blind reach out. I can specifically call somebody out and say, hey, this is what I'm going through. Can you help me through something? So let me know if you need more information for that. The next one is Kids Connect. I put the link up there. Um, for the Library Commission, there is graphics coming. Um, so all of us public libraries, I think there's only a few with a few exceptions who were um, having the Kids Connect installed and it's working right now. There is supposed to be graphics coming out. Um, I think Karen said that there had been a little bit of snafu. They needed to rework something um, at their side, not the Library Commission side, and that they're hoping to get us the graphics soon so that we can start promoting it. I know my local schools have things, but it's more of the school ones um, that they have up. So I think the school graphics got done a lot quicker than um, the library graphics did. So we're just kind of waiting for that right now. Um, and also a reminder, check that link out. Um, if your libraries are not showing up and you know you're a Kids Connect location, make sure you um, contact the Library Commission so that they can contact IT and their other channels to let you know that it's not showing correctly. Um, the next one is State Network, and I literally took this from a director's recap directly because I thought if there was some staff members on here from other libraries, they, they would like to know this. Um, Karen shared that the RFP for hosting the Library Network has been approved and awarded, and that the winner is Frontier at $1 per MBPS per month. Implementation will begin soon, but it will be a longer process than the Kids Connect install. Progress will be made, just don't anticipate it to be swift. It is a three-year contact. Um, so if you guys need more information about that, I would definitely directly contact the Library Commission. But for those that are on the state network, this is exciting news because from how I understand it and from what we've been told, we're going to have better connection. One of these days, it is coming. Um, the last thing in current news is the connection, or I'm sorry, is the new consortium. Um, for those of you, of you that don't know, there is a new consortium in West Virginia. It is called the West Virginia Library Network, WVLN for short. Um, it is Norland and Mountain joining together to make one humongous consortium. Um, we're all under the same roof. Um, we, are hoping, we were hoping to go live next month on the 11th um, because of some staff snafus that weren't triple I side, which is our vendor, um, or our side issues. It was more with Frontier, but, or Verizon, but they're saying that it's not them, their problem. Um, we had to do some weird work around. So shout out to the um, uh, Larry, Chris, all of those phenomenal people in the IT department at the Library Commission because they worked tirelessly with, um, the uh, triple I team to figure out how they could start morphing. Um, what was happening was we were running into an issue. The um, Norland and Mountain are both on physical servers 
and Mountain was making the transition to cloud first and they ran into issues of uploading things. So they've helped us tremendously get to where we need to go. Um, so thank you to, you know, Tammy Richard and everything that's helped us get to where we are so far. So now our new go live date is hopefully, fingers crossed, is going to be um, uh, during a day in December when Norland and Mountain are officially under one roof, meaning we are using one um, Sierra and not two separate Sierras right now. Um, please contact myself um, or any other board member um, if you need contact information to get into our Slack channel. So the, li um, the library network is using um, under one cloud. Thank you, Catherine. That's a good one. Um, the library um, network is using Slack as our main mode of communication. So there is a WVLN Slack channel. If you are a WVLN member, you're a library staff, you're a director, board member, whoever, and would like to have access to the um, network, please send a request to me and I can put your email in so that you can um, you know, be kept up with all of the information and all the updates that's happening with WVLN. We are utilizing listservs, but WVLN is our main mode of transportation for everything. So we are trying to get as many people on there. Um, so if you would like to join and you are one of the WVLN library staff members, board, like I said, please let me know. Otherwise, it's everything that I just wanted to go over with you guys, just to make you aware that Norland and Mountain um, will pretty much cease to exist within um, the next few weeks, the next few months or so. Um, we will be known as just WVLN. We're working at a lot of things. So um, the WVLN libraries that have joined us on this call today, um, I can't reiterate enough. If you've been asked by a committee member or somebody to get something done, um, patron block tables, um, eventually it's going to be loan rules, whichever, please get that done um, because that is going to help us make sure that we stay on our schedule to get the system where it needs to be. A lot of mapping has to happen and um, we need your guys' help to make it kind of a little bit seamless if we can. The next one is um, connection between libraries, pretty much how to stay in contact. We've discussed in past, I believe, public library division meetings, if there's better ways for people to connect with. Um, so the first one I'm going to say is that um, there's Facebook groups. One of them is the West Virginia Public Library Directors and Branch Managers. So if you are a branch manager or a library director and are not already on, the um, Facebook page and would like to join that Facebook page, please contact Melissa Brown. She'd be able, she's one of the head moderators, she'd be able to get you access to that. The other one is called Storytime Underground West Virginia. Um, Denise Norris is um, the lead lady on that one. And so if you would like to kind of stay up with programming, you would like to connect with other programmers throughout West Virginia just to get ideas and throw things around, um, please feel free to join that Facebook page. And then the other one is West Virginia Libraries Summer Reading Supporters. And you'll have to contact Lisa at the Library Commission for that one. Um, and that one literally is exactly what it sounds, everything um, summer reading related. Um, if you would like further information or if you think there could be another library page started or maybe another mode of communication, I'm all ears. Um, I guess we can kind of leave that as the incoming chair if they would like to try anything. Um, obviously, there's the email listservs um, WVLA and WVLC has. Um, so I'm open. I'd be willing to try to start anything if there's a Facebook group. Um, let me see what somebody just noted here. Yes. Um, actually, I've played around with um, not Slack. Oh, gosh. What's the gaming one? And my, my husband would be so mad if I forgot it right now. It's... Um, Discord? Thank you. That's the one. I'm, I have it and um, I'm becoming better user of it. If somebody would like or if people think Discord would be another side mode of communication that you guys are very familiar with, I'd have no problem with starting a channel. Um, so I'm open to doing whatever and helping the incoming chair kind of just connect us a bit better. I think COVID really brought out that 
we need the support um, of other people to not feel like we're losing our brain and um, not to feel that we're in, you know, in our own, that there's people out there going through the same thing. Um, Erica noted a WordPress discussion board would be awesome. Um, if anybody has kind of the means, the knowledge of getting something like that up and ready, I think that'd be amazing and just sharing it. Um, honestly, I think just having different, different ways would be great. Um, you know, is there a forum somewhere, a discussion forum that somebody would like to use? So if you can think of anything, shoot me a private message, um, uh, email, or however you want to contact me if you're friends with me on one of my social media accounts. And I'd be happy to try to figure out and finagle something. And if I don't know how to do it, I'll find somebody who knows to help us out. Um, that's what I had for connection between libraries, because I feel like it has just made it um, detrimental to our health that we stay connected and stay sane. Um, so let's move on to the Chair Elect 2020 and Chair 2021. Um, elected at the fall conference in 2019 was Mary Hooper. Um, Mary, I know you're on here today. Um, is this still something that you are game to do and able to move forward with? I think you were commenting, so. Okay, so Mary said she is good to go. So my next, we're gonna be able to move to the next one already. And it's going to be the Chair Elect 2021 and the Chair 2022. So meaning this is going to be um, somebody who can help Mary. You could kind of shadow her and what she's doing. And a few things, just to give you guys a brief overview of what being chair for this division means, is that you would assume duties at the fall 2021 conference. So during pretty much this next year, you could just be a helping hand um, with Mary and kind of learn the ropes, um, but everything is not on your shoulders. So it's kind of a nice learning curve there. Um, and so then you learn from that. Um, you are, your main duty is planning spring flame. So whoever is elected tonight would be the person who would plan spring fling 2022. So we have some time and hopefully by 2022, we'll definitely have it in-house conference again. The time commitment is police controlling and also attending WVLA board meetings, which is currently held virtually. Um, for board meetings, you can submit a small report on what you have been up to regarding the division. So literally, it could be just a few sentences if you've done anything, if you've been involved in anything on behalf of the library division. The meetings sometimes run uh, two hours or so virtually. In-house, if you have it face-to-face, um, -face, it's a little bit longer, but um, I think we've been handling a lot of um, things pretty quickly. Um, Todd Duncan is the incoming president, so he would be the person that you could definitely contact for further information and kind of direction as well. Um, and I'm going to open up and have a call for nominations. Is there anybody on the call today that would like to nominate themselves or nominate anybody else um, for this chair elect position for 2021? Chair position 2022. Okay, hey, Casey, did you say something? I said, don't everybody jump at once. Jeez. <laughs> I had Sarah um, from Cabell County. Um, so we have one nomination or one interest on the floor so far. Do we have anybody else that would like to be interested? <laughs> Sarah, I like the way you think. Um, if there's no more, I'm going to move forward. Um, please, 2022, oh, John would be interested. Okay, so we have two people right now. I literally am trying to figure out how best would be to do the voting. Let me do this. Um, I don't know why this moved down here. So let me see if I can see everybody. John, could you clarify what? So this is the chair elect for 2021 and would do spring fling 2022. Is that what you're saying you're interested in? Because he said I'd be interested in for 2022. I think you're muted, John. I saw yeah. your mouth move. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, I think both uh, Sarah and I are the same thing. Okay, okay. Okay, so I can see a handful of you virtually and some of you I can't see. So what I'm going to ask, uh, how should we do this? Is we could, problem? you want to do it I as can a send chat? a link out. Oh, vote by chat. Yes, let's do that. And I'll tally the results. Maybe as we move on, I'll sit there and go through them. Or if, if there's somebody on the call that would like to tally it for me, I'd forever love you and send you a Christmas card. I can do Alex. that. Alex. Oh, thank Alex. you, Sarah. I appreciate Alex. it. Alex, it's yes, Denise. Denise. You can actually do a survey right there and you'll get your answers. You can do a survey in Zoom. I am just driving this one right now. So let me see what the Library Commission has access to. Because I think that you can, like I said, use push a survey to everybody and ask the question and then everybody will answer you because we're we've used it a couple of times with our kids programs this one does not have the option so they might uh, have the the um let me see yeah no they don't have anything on their options for it so yeah let's use the chat and sarah will um See, Good when we question. did it last time, when I did it last time for the um, Youth Services Roundtable, what we, for the voting for the roundtable, we did it just as a survey through Google Survey. That way everybody would get it and everybody could respond. I thought of doing it that way. And, um, okay, Michelle, I'll see what it'll allow me to do. Um, I know that there's a, a, a thing on the thing saying we should, should we get the entire membership? So my question to you is this, when we are actually in-house in an in-conference event, we never have the full membership for it. We, we just go with whoever's there voting as long as we have a relatively nice amount of people. And we have 31 participants today. So I would feel comfortable if everybody else feels comfortable Alex, with just doing the vote on the thing. Yeah, John. Alex, yeah, to make it easier, uh, since Sarah put her interest in first, I'll yield the floor. To her and I'll put in for like next year for the okay. 2023. We'll do it that way just to make it easier for everybody. So I'll you do it that rock way. my socks off today. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate that. Okay. So I'm going to revisit then. Um, can I just have a unanimous consent that Sarah is the chair elect for 2021 and the chair for 2022? Alrighty, I saw some yeses of shakes of heads and five trillion yeses and eyes are popping up in the thing. So I'm going to officially note that Sarah, you have won the golden ticket. You are the um, chair elect and um, I would be happy. I know Mary is the one um, doing it next year and then obviously you'll be under her, but as always, I'd be happy to help anybody um, since Denise and I kind of muddled through this um, before, once before, and if we can help you in any way, I'd be more than helpful um, and to do it for you as well. Yeah, I'm happy to help as well if anybody needs a, a, any assistance. Thank you. All right, so. Hey, Alex, okay I'm sorry. This, Yes, ma'am. Uh, does, anybody, does anybody know the location if we are going to do, if it ends up being a physical, where I, it is? I think it's back in South Charleston. Okay. I didn't know for sure. So, yeah, okay. I think we're still coming to visit you guys. I think. Don't quote me, but I remember reading something, and with my brain the way it is, I could be making that up. Uh, that's my understanding as well, that it was like the basically to not be penalized, we had to rebook it there. And since it wasn't booked anywhere else, that was fine. Yes. Perfect. And I will tell you, Mary, that the people at the hotel, um, the contacts, I'm gonna, how do I say this nicely? Um, if you change your underwear often, that is how they change the contacts at that hotel. Um, so the best bet I can say to do is just keep a constant in constant contact with the contact you have and at the first sign that that email is no longer going through to contact the hotel and get somebody new. Otherwise, the hotel was very, very well um, 
I guess you could say receptive to any questions that I had, regardless of who I was working with. So I did enjoy working with that intel. Great, open floor now. Is there anything that anybody would like to discuss? Um, any questions, comments, concerns? Um, before I kind of yield the floor to Mary and give her the, the key. Alrighty, well, I think that is the shortest meeting I've ever been able to get it done. Um, you did not, Casey, um, what I can do is I can send my agenda out to anybody who would like it um, and get it, um, how best to send it. I'll figure out how best to send it, probably a listserv, um, one of the WVLA ones, when they send out or maybe if they post to their website, all the different things that we discussed. But I'll Facebook message you and give you kind of a recap. There wasn't anything important. Um, but if there's nothing else that people would like to discuss, I'm going to give the floor to Mary. Um, Mary, this is definitely your time now to take over. And if you have anything on your agenda that you would like to talk about um, next. Okay, um, Mary said um, her audio isn't working. So the only thing she has is to please let her know if you have any suggestions or topic ideas for spring fling. Um, and I definitely concur with that. You might think it's too early now, but um, getting a kind of game plan definitely helped with a lot of people that already had ideas of what they wanted to do. Um, I think we could kind of add on to that, that if you found some amazing virtual program that you guys were able to get up off the ground due to COVID. That would be a great program um, to talk about. Um, Tony, the theme, I don't know. Todd's the one that picks that theme. And I'm assuming that at one of the general sessions, probably number three, is going to be when he discuss, discusses what the theme is for next year. Um, and this meeting is being recorded. So um, once I get the information, I'll make sure to get that sent out to everybody as well. Hopefully I haven't missed anybody's questions. So, all right, Mary doesn't have anything else after that. So I'm going to say that I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 328, two minutes before what I wanted to do for all of you guys. Um, thank you for joining me today. Um, I know that everything's been a little bit hectic um, and it's just lovely times here, but if I can be in a, of any assistance to anybody, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Hopefully we can all kind of get some R&R. Some, uh, &R. All right, guys. See you guys later. Okay, thanks, Alex. Have a good day.